Okay, we're going to finish up or try to finish up this uh, this sermon, Thinking Like a Servant. We did uh, parts one and two. This is going to be the last part, hopefully, part three. And I uh, apologize again of my reading. I'm not the best equipped reader. Never have been, never claimed to be. I do have a kind of a stuttering problem. I have no idea why. But uh, I'll read this and uh, move forward. We got uh, other uh, things to uh, talk about as far as a servant goes. And I've been reading, going through our uh, sermons and stuff. place here looks kind of a mess. Do you need a secretary? I often said that to myself. Do you need a secretary? Do you need to take, take some time off and just I don't know if this stuff is worth salvaging at times or not. Yeah, we're not. Working around here uh, you can see this place you're like, well Larry hmm. I got new pictures to put up with mom and dad and Hubert and Susie uh, somewhere I have uh, just uh, office things that we need to uh, move around look neat papers and stuff sermons and uh, all that but uh, three uh, let's see we talked about uh Thinking like a servant, how we're supposed to be thinking in this world, thinking as Christ thought. Christ thought of himself as a servant. He was the first servant of God. Uh, him being Lord, he placed himself uh, as a servant. He came into this world and worked as a servant and taught his disciples, who later became the apostles, to do so being at a servant to all if you are a servant to all then uh, you are the most you being the most many uh, real servants pay attention to needs servants are not always on the lookout for ways to help others when they see a need they seize the moment and the moment to need it just as the Bible commands us as we have therefore opportunity let us do good to all men especially those especially unto them who are of the household of faith Galatians chapter 6 verse 10 now I knew a man, I don't know if, how many of you will listen to this, and you guys will know who I'm talking about, but Brother Earl Williams, he was the head deacon of our church for about all of my life. Uh, throughout my years at Bible Baptist and Old Pathway Baptist Church, church he was the, the deacon, the head deacon. And if you ever go to his house like I have many, many of times, and sit down and talk to him about the Bible, this is one of the verses Pops would like talking about, one of his favorite verses. Uh, he'd uh, quote this as, there, as we have therefore opportunity, let us good, do good to all men, especially unto them which are of the household of faith. He turned around and he said, especially. He said, there's especially there. He'd look at me, hey Larry, there's an especially there to do good of the household of faith especially for the household of faith in, in other words you take the household of faith you take the church and you set it to the side and you say that's number one That's that, that has to be done period in the discussion especially the household of faith do good unto them that means do good unto the pastors the leaders, the elders, the uh, deacons, the clergy, 
everybody underneath as well. Not one above the other. Everybody is equal in there. I don't care if they were like I was. When I first started out, I was an usher. I took up the money. Still, you do good to them people as well. If they are a Sunday school teacher, you do good to a Sunday school teacher. No matter what position you hold in the church, you do good to them, period. When God puts someone in the right, when God puts someone in need right in front of you, He is giving you the opportunity to grow in servanthood. Now notice, He gives you the opportunity to go grow in servanthood, not in Godhood, not in mankindhood or anything else, but in servanthood. This is all about learning how to serve one another. What do you think we're going to do when we get to heaven? I ask people like that and I get some of the most craziest things that you ever have to mention. What people actually think we're going to do when we get to heaven. We're going to look up each other. We're going to uh, make sure everybody is okay. And they're going to make sure we're okay and we're all going to get along. What a concept. Too bad you can't find that on earth here. Notice that God says, in the needs of your church family. Now notice this. God says, the needs of your church family are to be given preference, not put at a bottom of your things to do list in other words they are to be number one we miss many occasions for serving because we lack sincerity and spontaneous great opportunities to serve never last long. They pass quickly, sometimes never to return again. You might, you may only get the one chance to serve that person, so take advantage of the moment. Say not unto thy neighbor, go and come again, and tomorrow I will give when thou hast it by thee, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 28. He was just as exhausted as everyone else, but he did what everyone needed. No task is beneath you when you have a servant's heart. Great opportunities often discourages themselves in small tasks. The little things in life determine the big things. Don't look for great tasks to do for God. Just do the non-so-great stuff and God will assign you whatever. He wants you to do he, he will assign you whatever he wants you to do. But before attempting the extraordinary, try something, try serving in ordinary fashions. He that attempting to extraordinary. Let's see. But before uh, attempting an extraordinary, Try some serving in other ways. He that is faithful in that which is least is found faithful also in much. And he that is unjust in the least is unjust as also in much. If therefore he have not been faithful into the into if therefore you have not been faithful in the unrighteous matters. 
who will commit you to trust the true riches. Any of you have not been faithful in that which is another man's? Who shall give you that which you own? Luke chapter 16 verses 10 through 12. Uh, I wanted to stop in a couple of places there because a, a thought come to my mind about my uh, mother. She had a she's had a servant heart all of her life. Can you imagine the rewards she's going to get? Not reward, but reward she's going to get because she was a servant in all things that God had for her to do. Not from the time that she was born again, but also from the time when she understood the concept when she was a teenager and all. And the same thing goes for every single one of us. Uh, God will not look over one over the other, but he will uh, do us all equal, as uh, the Bible has said. There will always be more people willing to do great things for God than there are people willing to do the little things. The race to be a leader is crowded, but the field of, is wide open for those who are willing to be servants. Sometimes you serve upward in those in authority, and sometimes you serve downward to those that are in need. Either way, you develop a servant's heart when you are willing to do anything needed. Point number uh, two in this lesson here. Real servants are faithful in their ministry. Servants finish their task, fulfill their responsibilities, keep their promises and co complete their commitments. They don't leave a job half undone and then uh, don't quit when they get discouraged. They're trustworthy and dependable. Psalm chapter 12 verse uh, 1 Help Lord, for the godly man ceases, for the faithful falleth among the children of men. Help us, Lord. John Wesley was an incredible servant of, of God. His motto was, do all. His motto was, do. Was do all. The good you can, can by all means that you can, in all the ways that you can, in all places that you can, in all times that you can, in all, all people that you can, and as long as you ever can. This this is great. This is greatness. You can begin looking. You can begin by looking for small tasks, not that is no one else will do. Do little things as if they were great things, because God is always watching. Lastly, real servants do the best with what they have. Servants don't make excuses procrastinating or wait for better circumstances servants never say one of these days or when the time is right they just do what needs to be done the Bible says he that observeth the wind shall not cease shall not sorrow but he that regardeth the clouds shall not weep Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 4 
God expects you to do what you can with what you have. Whatever you are. Wherever you are. Less than perfect servants is always better than the uh, best intentions. You've heard, I would do it, but I had uh, the best intentions. Best intentions don't get nobody nowhere. One reason many people never serve is that they fear they are not good enough to serve. They have they have believed the, the lie that the that, uh, serving God is only for superstars. Some Christians have fossiled this myth by making excuses an idol. Which making which makes people of average talent hesitant to get involved. You may have you may have heard you may have heard that it, it said if it, it can't be done with excellence, don't do it. Well, Jesus never said that. The truth is, almost everything we do is done poorly when we first start doing it. That is how we learn. It doesn't have to be perfect for God to use it to use and to bless it. All it takes us to do is for us to go out and try and do it. Mom would always teach my brother and I to try, to try. If you don't get it right the first time, try, try, try. And the more you try, and my brother and I had learned this, the more that we try to do things, the more that we did it, the more that we practiced and we got better and we got good at it. It didn't have to be perfect just as long as it was done. And uh, we got to the point where perfection eventually came. But we had to go through the hardships and the things, working around a house and uh, pulling up weeds, doing that, that I'm saying, uh, doing our chores. Uh, we live in a generation today that has no chores. They don't have no responsibilities. Chores are responsibilities. And when my generation was, we had chores. We had things that we had to do, things to help out around the house, things that we could do. And they always taught us, which technically we may not have done much, but if you see an opportunity or you see something, you do it. I'll close by saying this. Uh, I don't uh, I don't get bored much anymore because I see now through the eyes of mom and dad that there is always something to do around the house there's something that needs to be done and in my life there's always something needs to be studied preached or uh idea pops in my head, write it down, uh, write stories, storylines, stuff like that. Uh, there's always something creatively to do in the world as you get older. I hope this uh, three-part sermon has been a help to you, that you understand that we are servants here in this world. We are to serve the Lord our God first. We are to serve the household of faith second. We serve one another, and then we serve as we can. And this concept of serving people is basically how we win people to the Lord. The Lord went out and he served people and he met their needs. And when their needs were met, they came unto him and 
they their lives were forever changed. If you want to change people's lives, go out there and uh, meet their needs to the most that you have. And then it'll make a difference to everyone, everywhere.